Now and then a monitor arrives for review and today we have something quite exquisite. We're going to talk about AOC Aegon Pro AG324UX. This is a 4K IPS 144Hz 1 millisecond response time gaming monitor. Now with the diagonal of 32 inch 31.5 to be precise we have a quite big panel right and uh, it's quite interesting to actually have something like this compared to the Philips 70 a 42 inch that we had a couple of months ago. Now with all of this that I have right here on the table with loads of specifications and features we need to go all through that to give you some more insights. Is it good for console gaming? Is it good for PC gaming? Uh, is it good for extreme competitive gaming? Or is it just for casual gaming and standard workflow? So yeah, we need to go through that. So let's first go through the specs. As I already mentioned, 31.5 inch IPS panel, which uh, has typical brightness at 350 cardia per square meter. Contrast ratio is 1000 to one typical. 80 million to 1 DCR. We have response time at 1 millisecond grade to grade. Viewing angle is 178 degrees horizontal and vertical, which is obvious. And then we have color gamut uh, NTSC 109%, sRGB 121%, and DCI-P3 99%. Delta E color accuracy is below 2, and we have uh, 1.7 billion display colors. Uh, signal input, we have two HDMI 2.1 HDR, uh, one uh, DisplayPort 1.4 HDR and USB-C DP Alt 90 watts, one of that. In addition to that, we have a USB hub, USB 3.2 generation one, four of these and mini USB for keypad, uh, which I have right here on the table, but we will get to that part. Now the power supply, you get a huge brick of an adapter, which kind of goes into the segment where we have the 90 watts delivery power for your uh, laptop or mini PC. We'll get to that part later on. Typical power consumption is 57 watts and we have two speakers, eight watts, which we have to check out as well. We have one earphone combined with microphone and microphone in out as well. We have West amount 100 times 100 and the weight of the monitor just without the stand is 7.1 kilos, but with the stand is 10 kilos. So let's go to the design. Now, first of all, I do have to say I love the design, quite minimalistic. Love the uh, thin bevels on the edges on the left, right and top one. The bottom one is standard with uh, Aegon logo right here in the middle. Now, except for that logo, you have a holographic logo right here in the middle from the stand, which you could choose to be an actual uh, Aegon logo or you can have it lettered out just like this one. The stand is robust and is quite big, I do have to say. And unfortunately, the one thing that is bugging me a bit is this. It doesn't have a fixed point where the monitor doesn't move. So if, for instance, you don't have a pretty stable table or if you play really aggressively, it will definitely wobble a bit. So here's the thing, uh, my suggestion, if there's a possibility, and if you don't use all the functions of the stand, wall mount it or mount it on an additional uh, arm just to get that stability on the monitor so it doesn't move a lot. Now, when we're talking about the design, we have to go through the stand. It is a quite big one, but we have three rubber feet, one on each leg and one at the back side. Uh, the back design is quite nice when we're talking about the color scheme and the actual design, red with black, quite cool and, but honestly, you won't be even seeing that at the back. So regardless of that, that's uh, quite all right. You can adjust the height of the monitor where the lowest point where you push it further down is 6.8 centimeters from the table. And if you push it to the maximum is 20 centimeters. I noticed that this information is quite important for some of you guys uh, to know the actual heights uh, because of the limitations that you might have on your table, on your setup or anywhere, uh, regardless of that. So you can swivel it without a problem and you can tilt it as well. And you can rotate it, but only on one side. So you can't rotate it on both sides. Plus the stand that connects to the monitor, since uh, the stand needs power for the logo at the bottom, uh, you have four pin connectors, which are nicely designed, I have to say, because what it is, it's not a direct contact in terms of they just 
touch the connection on the monitor and that's it. They have some sort of a pins that go inside just in case they don't break. And that's quite cool because it uh, kind of prevents, I think I covered that in my, uh, I think it was Logitech G Pro steering wheel where you place the wheel on the base. So regardless of the monitor, this is a correlation when we're talking about the pins and how it is well designed. At the back side of the monitor, we have some lights. Uh, in terms of seeing them, you won't be seeing them. And they don't create some immersive gaming, giving you additional lights and spreading the uh, screen to your wall. It's just there at the back. It does look nice, but you won't be seeing it. So you could definitely switch it off. And since we're at the back, you have on the left side, a headset hanger, which in my opinion, is one of the best designs I have seen because all others kind of do a flip out and then you place your headset. This one just slides out quite nicely, subtly, and I actually do love it. Now, when we go on the front, we have an LED strip going from the bottom and you can adjust the lights to your liking because you can either go with red, green, blue, you can go with rainbow color, you can adjust the light to any that you desire in the OSD menu. Now, since I'm in the OSD menu, we have this, uh, some sort of a controller, let's put it this way. And I mentioned the connection that it has a dedicated one. And basically you enter it by pressing OK. Then you have three numbers here, four presets, uh, arrows to navigate through the OSD menu and you have a back button. So let's check this out. We have game settings where when you enter, you have the game mode. Uh, shadow contrast, game color, MBR, adaptive sync, overdrive, uh, low input lag, quick switch LED, uh, frame counter, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. So you can adjust here the frequency and let's go back. So then we have PIP settings. Uh, now picture in a picture you can also adjust in terms of uh, going with PIP or PBP. PIP gives you an option to adjust uh, the screen and you can even adjust it in terms of the size, small, middle and large. And of course, you can also go with PBP. So that gives you picture by picture and that divides the screen into two, which could come in handy. And for you guys that work uh, with uh, multiple computers or laptops or whatever, or mini PCs, you can definitely take an advantage of this. Then we have audio adjustment. I stated that we have here two times eight watt speakers. You can adjust the volume DTS sound and true volume HD. Now I am shocked that the AG32 4 UX has quite nice speakers and compared to others, I have literally nothing to say, but as I always state speakers on the monitor aren't good. These are better without a doubt. These are better. But if you want a higher quality sound, definitely go with dedicated speakers or if you're playing with headsets, go with the headset and that's it. Now, next in line, we have some extras right here. Input selection, USB, USB selection, logo projection, which you can adjust the brightness of it and uh, everything else. And on the right side, we have luminance where you can adjust the contrast, brightness, eco mode, gamma, DCR and HDR mode, color setup for low blue mode, color temperature, uh, DCB mode and DCB demo. And then we have light FX, which gives you a possibility to adjust the lights on the monitor with LED strip on front and those uh, panels at the back. Finally, we're going to the OSD setup where you can adjust the timeout uh, language, uh, DP compatibility, horizontal and vertical position, uh, transparency, and break reminder. So all in all, this uh, controller, I would say right here, kind of does give you and help you with the OSD menu, even though for personally, if we're talking about the cables, I would definitely remove it because you can do all of this at the joystick at the back. So it kind of goes both ways. If if you're setting it up for the first time, use this one. When you're done, when you set up your monitor, you just unplug it and store it in the box. That would be my suggestion because a cable, additional cable running out in your clean setup is a big no-no for me. So yeah. Now here's the thing. Unfortunately, you can't run a MBR, so motion blur reduction mode with adaptive sync, which also means that with the MBR mode, 
you can't run AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync, which might not be suitable for some of you. And this is the thing, in some settings, it lowers down the brightness very low. So I noticed when adjusting everything, I did get the peak brightness at uh, 350 kHz per square meter. But in some settings, it lowers it down quite low and it kind of does look pretty dim. Now, HDR 400 plus G-Sync plus 144 Hz works great without a doubt. And it is compatible with uh, NVIDIA card, so you won't have any issues with that. With the HDR400 in this price range, I would expect to have at least 600 or 1000, but then again, it's all up to you to decide if you're going to play with it or you're just going to switch it off. Um, gamut coverage is actually in 99.1% sRGB, 70.7% .7 Adobe RGB, and 73.5% DCI-P3, while the gamut volume is 103.8% sRGB, 71.5% Adobe RGB, and 73.5% DCI-P3. Now, the color accuracy is unbelievably impressive, and I do have to say, it looks outstanding. For your workflow, for editing, or for anything similar to that, this will be a great choice. Color accuracy is unbelievably impressive, and the contrast ratio is also really good with 900 to 1 when tested. And the average delta E is unfortunately 1.97, which needs to be lower than 1.5. And the maximum delta E is 5.12. It needs to be lower or equal to 4. Now, don't get me wrong. It, uh, for some of you guys, this might mean something. But gamers won't be bothered too much about this because it still does give you a pretty nice image. And yeah. So one more thing I do have to say, the response time is pretty decent and you'll be satisfied, but for the extreme and let's put it this way, competitive gamers, uh, you might not be that satisfied. So it's either for some sort of a casual gaming in terms of you're playing with your friends constantly and that's it. If you're going for something where you do actually go to tournaments and you need lowest input lag, you won't be that uh, satisfied in those terms, okay? So for workflow, when we're talking about color, color grading and all the other stuff, it should be and could be really good. And for gamers that really like to play on their own or multiplayer in terms of enjoyment and casual gaming. Now, when we're talking about that USB-C port, it's quite interesting because since I mentioned you have a big brick of an adapter, uh, the USB-C delivers 90 watts of power. And this means it can power up your laptop, MacBook, or whatever you have that actually supports that kind of charging, and mini PC. So if you remember a couple of days ago when I did cover the, that mini PC from uh, Mini's forum, this could be a quite cool combination. I mean, not for gaming, of course, because the mini PC is too weak to actually run any games on 4K resolution. But regardless of that, it's quite interesting to be able to combine something like this. Of course, you're going to go with a monitor that actually can deliver something to that mini PC or a mini PC that can deliver 4K gaming. But regardless of that, this could be a quite nice uh, combination, laptop or a mini PC. It's all up to you. When I eventually have time to play games, uh, I usually go with uh, FPS and Battle Royale, so Battlefield, PUBG, eventually adventures like Witcher 3, and I can say that the picture and response time for me was satisfying, and I can't argue with that because I'm not into that extreme competitive gaming, first of all, because I don't have the time, secondly, well, depends on which you look, because I'm not that actually good, let's put it that way. But when we take into consideration that the workflow on 4K and this, this type of screen, this size and the IPS panel is definitely going to be outstanding. Well, at least in my opinion. Uh, the stand is a bit big and honestly, I think the wobbliness does a bit concern me. I would place it on a wall mount or a additional stand that will have it more fixated. Since we have tilt swivel height adjustment and vertical position as well, this is where it comes to that uh, wobbliness of the stand at the back. The, the logo here is something that you personally have or won't have. It's all up to you to decide. And uh, quite cool package when we're talking about cables because you do get USB Type-C, you get the uh, HDMI 2.1 and you get the display port plus of course the adapter and everything else. And two additional, I would say those are some sort of a 
ties that you use to rearrange the cable so it kind of does look uh, nice after all because there are no holes in the stand in the middle so you have to reroute the cables here at the bottom you could mount those clips at the back and then reorganize the cables to your liking so they kind of did think about the cable management in those terms which is quite all right and i would say nothing against that always big fan of a great cable management uh, all in all the price in us as i noticed currently is 800 dollars which i would say is solid quite all right but in europe it does cost a lot 1180 euros which i think you could go with something different or at least cheaper because if for instance 32 is too big for you what i would suggest is going with 28 inch 144 hertz and one millisecond this is u28 g2xu which goes around 500 euros and that price tag is quite outstanding when we take into consideration that this one is double the price at least in europe so take that into consideration we're checking out i have nothing against this one the only thing that it could be better is giving a higher hdr 600,000, which some definitely some monitors in that price range at least in europe do have and all in all some response time which could be a bit better for competitive gaming and that would be all basically it's somewhere in the middle either you're looking for something that isn't for competitive gaming that you're looking for casual gaming and mostly for work which this monitor is ideal for me personally or if you're looking for something more competitive then i would go with that uh, u28 uh, g2xu which is double the price here so yeah quite uh, interesting combinations when we take everything into consideration but overall when we're talking about the ips panel design quality and everything else i'm quite satisfied with that part so guys if you're actually interested in the Aegon Pro AG32 for uh, UX, I'll place the link below just in case. And additionally, I'll place the link for that 28-inch uh, one that I suggested, which might be even more suitable for some of you guys. First, maybe because of the size. Secondly, because of the uh, specs, uh, response time and the price, of course. And finally, it's all up to you to decide what you're going to go with. So yeah, that's it for today. AOC Aegon Pro AG32 for UX. Uh, that will be all for today. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell for future content. See you very soon, guys. Bye-bye.